I'm in the process of building a new alert, which I've named Critical States, but I don't have any trigger condition logic yet, so I'll add that here on the Trigger Condition tab. The first thing I need to set is the type of object I'm alerting on. This determines which tables and fields you'll have available for building your condition logic. In the I want to alert on dropdown at the top of the list, you'll see common alert object types with a few dozen additional object types listed below. At the very bottom of the list, you have the option of building a custom SQL query. Remember, the alert engine only looks at the database, so all the alerts are SQL queries, but the alert editor almost completely eliminates the need for you having to write those queries yourself, but still, you do have the option. The alert object type defaults to alerting on a node, which is what I want in this case. The next section defines the alert scope, but I'm going to skip that for the moment and jump down to the actual trigger condition section, and here's where I'll add my alert logic. When I click on the plus at the bottom to add a new condition, you can see that there are three different condition types to choose from. Single value comparisons, double value comparisons, and and or blocks. Whenever you start a new alert, you'll have an and or block already added at the top of your condition list, and below that, you'll add your additional conditions. Double value comparisons are used when you want to compare one field to another field in the database. But I don't need to do that right now, so let me get rid of this condition and start with my single value comparison condition. The first field in the condition indicates which database table the alert engine will query. Based on the object type field up above where I said I want to alert on a node, the node table is selected by default. But if you look at the drop-down list, you'll see other tables that relate to the object type you've selected, which opens up more of the database to you for building more advanced alerts. Next, I'll choose the specific field to query. In the drop-down, you'll see a list of recommended fields at the top, followed by custom properties, and then recommended events. And then if you scroll all the way down, you'll see browse all fields, which again lets you dive deeper into the database. Now I've named my alert critical states, and a node being down would be the most critical of states, so I'll start with that. So I'll choose status for the field to query, and then I need to choose the expected value for the status field. Now, one of the nice features of the Alert Builder is that once you choose a field to alert on, it will actually query the database for you and show you all of the values for that field in the database. So you don't necessarily have to know or type in the return value, you can just select it from the list. And I'm going to choose the status of down. Now, before I do though, notice that there are several other status values listed in the database. When you're building your alerts, you'll need to make sure that you're accounting for those other possible variables in your alert logic. For example, rather than setting my condition to alert me when a node is down, it might be tempting to alert anytime the node status is anything other than up. The problem is that that would most likely result in a lot of false positives because you'd be alerting on statuses that don't necessarily make a lot of sense to include in a single alert. So when you're building your alert logic, you need to be very specific in what you want the alert to do. If you want to alert on multiple statuses, you should probably include a condition for each status you want to alert on. All right, so I have my first condition set. I'm alerting on any nodes in the database with a status equal to down. But I've named my alert critical states, and right now I only have a single state, so I'm going to add another condition, I'll add another single value comparison, and this time I want to alert if my CPU utilization is over 90%. So I'm going to select CPU load and set the return value to 90%. But this time I need to change the condition qualifier from is equal to to is greater than. And in fact, I need to change the condition qualifier for my and or block as well. If you look at the alert as it is, I'd only be alerting when the node is down and has a CPU utilization above 90%. That's not going to work, so let me change this from an AND statement to an OR statement. Now, if either of these conditions are met, I'll have an alert event. Make sure you pay attention to your condition qualifiers. But I've decided I don't want to look at CPU utilization all by itself. I want to look at memory utilization as well. I want to alert when both CPU and memory utilization are above 90%. So I'll add another condition. Now the first challenge with this condition is going to be making sure that I have the right field selected. Notice there is a memory used field and a percent memory used field. 
watch out for fields with similar names. I want percent memory used, and I'll set my return value to greater than 90%. But now I have a problem. I want to alert when both my CPU and memory utilizations are above 90%, and right now I'm alerting when either of them are over 90%. So I need to add a condition. I need to add an and or block, and I need to move my CPU and memory conditions into that block. You can move conditions around by drag and drop. Now you can see that my conditions for CPU and memory are nested within the and or block. And I'm going to just delete this condition that was added by default because I don't need it. Now notice that when I added the and or block that it was already set to an and statement. So how will this alert be processed now? Well, starting with the first condition, the alert engine is looking for any nodes with a status equal to down. But now how does it process the and or block? And or blocks are evaluated as a single condition. So the question is, does this and or block evaluate to true? Are there any nodes with a CPU utilization over 90% and memory utilization also over 90%? If so, both conditions of the and or block would be met, which means the entire and or block would evaluate to true, so I would have an alert event. The three conditions that I've added so far are all looking at current values in the database, but you can also alert on database events. I'm going to add one more condition, but this time I'm going to scroll down a little further in the list below recommended fields to the recommended events section. And I'm going to choose last boot has changed. This will alert me if the node has been rebooted. But notice that alerting on events looks a little different than alerting on field values. I'm not asked for an expected return value. Based on the event type you've selected, the alert editor sets the logic of the condition for you. All right, so let's run through my alert one more time. First of all, remember my initial and or block qualifier is set to or, so if any of the conditions are met, I'll have an alert event. So, condition one, check to see if any nodes are down. Condition two is another and or block, so this is evaluated as a single condition. For this to evaluate to true, based on the qualifier for this condition group, both conditions within the group have to be met. So this is asking if there are any nodes with both CPU utilization and memory utilization above 90%. And finally, condition three, have any nodes been rebooted? If any of these three conditions is met, I'd have an alert event. So here are my three critical states I'm alerting on. A node is down, CPU and memory utilization are both high, or a node has been rebooted. Now I'm okay with my alert logic now, but I'm not okay with the alert scope. Remember the scoping section up above that I skipped earlier? Notice right now I'm alerting on every node in the database. You will almost certainly want to scope your alerts based on who needs to see that alert. If I'm an application owner and I'm only responsible for a single server or a small group of servers, I don't want to see alerts on every node in the organization. So I'm going to change my scope from all objects to only the following sets of objects. And I'm going to choose just one of my servers, so I'll select the IP address field and choose my server IP. So now I'm only alerting on a single IP address. I could also select a range of nodes. Maybe I have a specific DNS naming convention for all my nodes. For instance, all of my servers are called ctlab something or other, so I can add another condition and look for DNS names starting with ctlab. But again, I need to pay attention now to my and or block qualifier. All right, my alert logic is set, I know what I'm alerting on, and I know what conditions are going to trigger an alert event. So now I'm ready to move on.